Hey guys, welcome to Into Fly Fishing and my name is Pierre Hubert and today we're going to tie a GFA hopper. GFA stands for General Foam Attractor. It's a very very quick hopper pattern to tie. Um, if you've tied other hopper patterns you'll know that it takes some time. This is very quick and just as effective as any other hopper pattern. So without further ado, the materials that um, you need to tie this fly. For the hook, I'm using a curved shank hook. This is by a company called Grip. This is size 12. The model number is, model number is 14582. You can use any 2 or 3x long hook shank. Um, I like using this specific hook on this pattern as I like the curve in the shank and the, the profile that it gives the fly. For thread, I'm using Semperfly Nano Silk 50 denier in white. This stuff is very strong, and when you when you twist it or un, untwist it or open the thread, it doesn't cut the cut the um, foam. For the underbody, a couple of fibers of peacock wool. I'm running out, so I'll soon have to buy some more. And for the overbody, I'm using two millimeter foam in tan. You can use any kind of foam to, to resemble many different species of hoppers or you can even go for foam colors dark purple or black to mimic crickets. For the underwing or the wing I'm using bleached elk. For the legs I'm using round barred rubber legs. This is with some orange barring on it. Very cool color. And I don't have it on this fly, but I'm going to tie a version just to show you how to do it. Just some fluorescent pink antron yarn for a sighter. Other material that we'll need is some um, Sally Hansen's. I use that just to seal the thread, exposed thread at the bottom of the fly, right there. And also some super glue, which gives the fly some durability. Tools that you'll need is a vise, a rotary vise really helps, especially when you are um, sealing the fly. Um, it's not entirely necessary, but it does help. A bobbin holder for your thread, a bodkin to apply some of that um, Silly Hansen's, a pair of scissors, a whip finishing tool and a hair stacker. The hair stacker looks like this and is just used to level the tips of the, of the hair wing. So let's get started and tie the fly. Remove that one from the vise and take a hook from the packaging. Place the hook in the vise like so. And what you're looking for is an exposed hook point and a bob, as this will be used to measure the proportions of the fly. This will, when you're measuring and, and looking for proportions on a fly, it, it's a very good idea because it just makes the, 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 the flies you tie more consistent. You're also looking to secure the hook very firmly, like that, and that the hook eye is positioned in such a way that when you whip finish the fly the thread won't slip off the um, the eye like so right so now we what we do is we attach the thread just behind the eye of the hook and just secure it like so take your scissor and cut off the excess that's nano silk is really tough stuff so that's why the scissor struggle a little bit uh, take two or three fibers of peacock roll, depending on the size of fly that you're tying. Just get some out here. Right. Align their tips. Let me just get like that. Align their tips by just cutting cutting them level like that. Now, 
With the shank that's bare, that's fine. I'm going to attach the peacock curl on top of the hook shank, just behind the um, eye, that's fine. And then we run the thread all the way back to the position of the bob, right there. You'll see that when I let the bobbin hang freely, the thread will intersect the bob. And now we wrap the thread forward. And we don't even move the thread forward. We just wrap the peacock curl forward and that will pick the thread up and move it forward with it. You can also use your rotary vise to do this, but I'm just going to show you right there. Move it forward, forward, like so, leaving a small gap between the peacock curl and the eye of the hook. Like so. Now we cut off the excess. So we need to leave a small gap between the eye of the hook and the peacock roll. Right. So the next step is to prepare the um, foam. So what we are looking at is the proportion of the width would be the same and slightly long, larger than the gape of this hook. This hook doesn't have a very wide gape, but you can use it as a reference. And you want a section that's about one and a half to two inches long. So I'm just going to measure. Cut the foam. And make a long, cut a long section. Like this, like so. And the back of the fly, you'll notice, if you look at the finished fly, has a tapered end, right? So, that we just create by cutting the foam at the back, like so, and just creating a little taper to it. You get body cutters, uh, you can get them through hairline, but most of us will just just to use foam like this. So that's this, the, a little bit wider than the gap, like that. And that will be positioned right on top of the hook shank, but we need to leave a little bit of the material in front. That will be folded over to form the thorax of the fly. Right, so position it just like that so that the body extends just behind the um, circle of the bend of the hook. Pinch it in place. Just open the thread so that it doesn't cut the foam. And secure it with your thread. Pull down tightly, like so. Right. Might be a little bit too long, so I'm just going to redo this. Just like so. That's about the, the correct size. That's more than enough foam in the front when folded over to create the thorax, and the length that's protruding behind the hook is perfect. So now, before we go further, we're going to take a little bit of super glue and we're going to brush it right on top of the peacock curl. This will give the fly durability. Fold the foam back and just dab some super glue on top of the peacock roll. Remember to close your super glue bottle properly before going on, otherwise the super glue won't last that long. Now place the foam back over it and pinch it in. Now we're going to create three segments for the 
first segment just cross over and make a wrap like so that's the first segment second segment same a little bit smaller like so and the third segment same size So now take your thread over again diagonally, one wrap like that, and diagonally do one wrap like that. As soon as that um, super glue cures, it's really going to make for a durable fly. You'll see that the peacock rule is exposed at the bottom, which is really a good trigger for trout. Right. At this point, we can continue um, to creating the underwing. We'll leave the thread right on this segment. That's where the underwing will be tied in. So, or shall I rather say the wing, there's no underwing on this fly. So we've got the elk hair, the bleached elk hair. Right. And we're going to cut off a little clump. So, after you've cut off a little clump, just pull out any loose fluffy fibers up from the base. There's always a couple that's shorter as well. Just remove them, pinch the clump by the tip, and there you have it. Right, so this is going into the hair stacking tool tips first and give it a good whacking on, on a firm or a hard surface. Now, slowly and gently pull open the hair stacking tool and you'll see that the tips are aligned perfectly. Pinch them and measure the length of the tips. I want them to be halfway in that last long segment right there right that's about the, the right length pinch them with your left hand and with a very sharp pair of scissors if you can find them cut while holding it in place cut the elk slightly longer right there now open the thread twisting in the opposite direction and make one thread wrap over the elk like so and pull tight. Now just secure them properly with a couple of wraps. The elk is secured properly now. Right now we're going to add some more um, super glue to the top of the foam. much but that's fine we can remove them close the bottle properly and with your bodkin I'm just going to remove a little bit like so right now fold over the foam and secure it Cut the excess foam. You want a little bit left over, but just like that. That's all you want. Right, now it's time for the legs. The legs can be tied in on, set, on both sides, um, one side at a time, um, but you can also use a very fast and clever method. So you cut one length 
and you fold it in half like so and at the loop that you created just cut it right there now you technically have two legs separate legs so hold both of the the legs should be the same length so the midpoint of the legs put them right um, so put them against the um, fly at the tying in point at the midway point and make two or three wraps around the the fly so now both are secured in at the same spot so take the one leg and just transfer it to the other side like so now just wiggle them about so that they are secured in the right spot like so The next step is to cut a section of antron yarn and I'm just going to put the midway section of the antron yarn right on top of the fly and give two or three proper wraps like so. Now pull the antron yarn up and with one clean cut, cut it off. Now there's your side tip. Next, transfer your thread forward, like so, and create a neat head for the fly, nothing too serious. Take your whip finishing tool and do a whip finish for the fly. Pull the knot tight and cut off the thread. All the tying's done. So all that we have left to do now is to cut everything to size and to cover all the exposed or some of the exposed thread se um, sections with some hard as nails. So the first would be the legs. So you have the forward or the front legs and the rear legs. So the front legs I wanna make slightly shorter than the rear legs. Pull the front legs together, cut them like so. Might cut them a little bit shorter still, like so. I think this side is a little bit longer than the other side. That's it. And the rear legs, just pull them together at the back. I'm just going to cut them like that. That's perfect. So now I'm going to twist the fly on its side for you to see. Open um, your head cement, take some head cement, put some on my bodkin and just drop some on that segment right there and on the head. Right. And that's how quick and how easy it is to tie a, um, a hopper. It's one of my favorite hoppers, as I said earlier, and it's, and it's super quick and easy to tie. Obviously now, for the video, I tied it um, you know, in, in, in quite a long time. This is almost 20 minutes. But um, if you really get into it and all your materials are set out and, and you, you get cracking, you can, you can tie them in a couple of minutes. Uh, three or four minutes if you if you're into into it. So um, yeah, it's a really great and effective and simple hopper pattern, um, which is what which is what you want as a fly fisherman. You don't want an over complex pattern which you end up losing by casting it into a bush or breaking it off on a big fish. So yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoy this video and that this hopper will catch you many fish. Cheers, cheers from into fly fishing. <laughs>